And at that point, I looked to the end of the bed and he was my dad standing there. My dad actually passed away um, 2018. And beside him was my best friend, Tania Stiles, who sorry, passed away 2012 of cancer. And they were both standing there looking at me and they looked so young. They looked like they, they, were, the, they were both like 30 years old. And they had a uh, like the clothes that we're in, like a fawny coloured type clothes, and um, yeah, and the 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 the, the thing I think about now to tell you the I'll just jump in is Tanya and Dad had never ever met any any anywhere on this earth before, but yet here they were together here in heaven. I'm here with Robbie McLean. Robbie McLean had a near-death experience nearly three years ago on July 19th of 2021. He died during a five-hour major open-heart surgery and crossed over to heaven. And he is here to share his story with us today. Robbie, thank you so much for being my guest. I'm really excited to speak with you. Yes, thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here too. And um, and it's uh, very special what you're doing and sharing everyone's stories to the world and as the world is awakening. Yeah, it's very good. Well, thank you. And like we were talking about before, if I had no stories to share, there would be nothing happening here. So thank you for sharing your story. It really means a lot to me and my viewers as well. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your life to come on and share. So you had this major surgery um, where you died. Tell me about what happened. Yeah, um, I, I would say leading, leading up to the surgery, it was uh, during the COVID times and um, it was nothing to do with COVID, um, but um, my heart deteriorated. We knew I had a, a, a heart valve condition, but it deteriorated just so rapidly. Um, we thought we'd probably have like another maybe five to 10 years before I'd have to have an operation. Um, but I'm guessing what happened was um, I, I just got so very sick and frail and I just wanted to sleep all the time. And I also have a thing called sleep apnea. So I have to have a like a mask that I sleep with. And um, I was just sleeping and we have cats and the cats were just like laying all over me, um, obviously trying to heal me. And um, yeah, I just wanted to sleep, sleep, sleep all the time. And um, I felt this massive big pain into my into my chest. And my wife came home from the gym and I said, man, I am just not feeling there's something not right, eh? Um, and yeah, and so she called the cardiologist. Um, and um, so that I was like, okay, we better get you. So we went into um, the, San, the San Hospital in Sydney actually and uh they did some extra scans and um then they found I had a big aneurysm the size of a tomato in the top of my heart as well which we didn't know about yeah but um so they said okay we better get you in so I did not know I was going to return so basically because of the COVID time is a very tough time and um, my wife dropped me off at the entrance of the hospital I walked up with my bag up into the hospital, waved goodbye. There was no visitors or anything like that as well. And uh, my children wanted to come and see me. They weren't allowed to either because of obviously lockdowns and things like that. Yeah, so it was a pretty, um, I'd say, a, a tough time lying there in the hospital bed wondering what's going to happen. So I was very positive to tell you the truth. I actually picked up the Bible and um, <clears throat> and I prayed to Jesus and I said, look, um, it's up to you whether you take me or I return after the surgery. And I wrote two letters. One letter if I passed over and one letter of things I wanted to do when I returned. So um went into surgery and <clears throat> I you know you so the surgery so what happens in the surgery? So basically they you your heart is stopped and your brain is stopped. So you have no functions. So you can't think, you can't dream. Your heart and everything is running through a big machine. You have like five surgeons as well as an anesthetist with you as well. Um, so they remove your heart 
and they cut out and put the new valve in. They cut the top of the heart out. They took the aneurysm out, replaced it with a tube. And yeah, but um, so this whole surgery took, it was it was actually five and a half hours. <clears throat> so you're there. So basically your organs are kept alive by the machine. Like I say, everything is flatlined. Your brain's flatlined and your heart is flatlined. So the mystery thing is I had a dream, which I thought was a dream at the time. So this dream happened like so. I was out of my body. The whole room was just glowing white. There were no ceilings or walls. It was glowing white. And there were people around me, which I couldn't actually see, but we were having this full-on conversation. Um, and straight ahead was my body lying on a hospital bed. Lying there on the hospital bed. Um, the conversation was telepathic and um i to the, to this I, I do not know what was said obviously it's something important what the conversation was and i've forgotten to come back to earth um but what happened was um this this was the the, the freaky bit to tell you the truth three angels came in and we could see they had a blue blue cloak blue cloak over here and over here you couldn't see their faces it was just the back of the cloak and they come in from the right hand side and the tails of the cloak just swooshed in you could see it just swoosh they just swooshed in like so and my soul or me or whoever got a fright like that i do remember that and at that point i looked to the end of the bed and he was my dad standing there my dad actually passed away um, 2018. And beside him was my best friend, Tania Stiles, who sorry, passed away 2012 of cancer. And they were both standing there looking at me. And they looked so young. They looked like they, they, were, the, they were both like 30 years old. And they had a uh, like the clothes that we're in, like a fawny colored type clothes. And um, yeah, and the, the 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 thing I think about now to tell you that I'll jump in is Tanya and Dad had never ever met any any anywhere on this earth before, but yet here they were together here in heaven. So that was that was quite quite freaky. But anyway, so I looked up straight into Tanya's eyes and telepathically she says everything's going to be okay. And then uh, sorry and then i i rose up over my body I rose up and i came up over my body i was looking down on my body two of these angels were at the bottom sort of like of my stomach area and all you could hear and the hands were so fast it was like so just swooshing just swooshing just oh my goodness it was incredible eh? the other taller angel had his hand in actually inside my heart and it's like he had a, a square metal object uh with a polished circle in it and he had it in my heart and he's aligning it like getting absolutely absolutely perfect this angel spoke he had a very deep um very deep voice so just here this is this is an actual drawing i drew the next day when i came out of when I came out of ICU, but I'll read to you here. Okay, the tall angel said, I just have to do this first. He put a silver and chrome square with a 20 mil circle embossed into my heart. Then he said, okay, I have finished. You can close him up. And then next I knew I woke up the wiggly my toe in ICU. Wake up, wake up. What's your name? What's your name? I was thinking, oh, Oh man, I was just having this awesome dream, you know. I was having a pretty cool dream there, you know. Um, <clears throat> so then I went into into the ICU, um, slept through the night, and obviously because my my chest had been like cut open and everything, and the repairs, and you're hooked up to wires and tubes and everything, and I was in a still like quite a lot of pain and couldn't couldn't sleep, but. Um, yeah, and then the next day, um, 
my wife phoned and we're talking on the phone and I and I told her what happened and my wife said she a nurse she's a cardi cardiologist nurse as well she says ah you didn't actually have a dream you had a near-death experience I said near-death experience what the heck is a near-death experience I've never heard of that before so in in the medical world they don't talk about it because it's I don't know woo -woo, I suppose but they don't talk about it in the medical world <clears throat> but um yeah so I while I was in hospital I could just feel this I know you're morphing and this is not morphing I tell you that you could just feel this just this glow just this warmth in the glow like throughout my whole my whole body just this just this glow this energy and people were passing in and out and coming through looking after you and um and then I'm I am so certain one nurse came in <clears throat> when I got released from hospital she had a different blue uniform on beautiful blonde hair she came in and I said wow that's a nice blue uniform I said it's different to the others and we we're talking away there and she says yes she says you're too young to be here what are you doing here you're too young to be here and as she was leaving <clears throat> like um she was saying she said something about um um yes blue blue and yellow go together nicely and she left and blue and yellow is actually one of my favorite colors like my rally cards are painted blue and yellow and i said oh my goodness and I, I wish i asked her name i just called her angel now so um yeah so anyway um the the other <clears throat> like i say the other tough thing was when i left hospital same thing COVID lockdown no visitors um my wife put a lot of pressure and stress on my wife as well um she had to work longer hours at her hospital to try and keep everything going in the household um but while i was healing i was i was laying in bed again and the cats they just were all over me in between my legs around up up top up over here um and they're just like healing me and healing me with with their energies and things um but for me i just felt i still felt this just this warmth energy and then i got up to go to the toilet one night <clears throat> and I, I still don't know why but i looked at the window up stars and i said what am i doing down here i'm meant to be up there with you guys you know and it's like and then i looked at my hands i was thinking wow, my hands look different. Everything looks different about me. My, my, my hands look a lot younger and things. And yeah, there's different, I guess, different signs that I didn't realize back then. And as I was healing, I had to recover. So I had a cushion. I would had a cushion on my chest and <clears throat> you had to do increment sort of like walks and build the walks up day by day by day sort of thing. But as I was walking around the neighborhood, bang, colors were popping out like, wow, I've never noticed those colours before. And the grass was like, oh, just greens was just like popping out of the greens and the flowers, the colours, the reds and the pinks. And then the sky was like, wow, look at the blue sky. Like everything was just like magnified. Um, yeah, so I guess that, that was some of the big changes then while I was still trying to understand exactly what happened to me as well. Um yeah and then lots of other things had happened as um healing abilities so my wife had a sore neck she says oh do you mind just rubbing my neck and I, I put my hands on her neck and she said oh I feel the warmth coming off your hands I said oh I don't know I've never had I've never had that before she said yeah, you can really feel the power the energy the warmth coming off your hands and so I thought oh okay so I just sort of round her neck like so and then her neck felt better it's like wow okay what's going on here this is this is pretty pretty neat so afterwards it took a long time to i guess for me is coming back into a um, into a normal world you realize a lot of wrongs in the world and it's like why are you doing that i, I say that even now what but why like a little kid but why because when you're a little kid you're very innocent when you come into the world um, your little souls and that's why kids say but why are the time because they they know that things are not right so that was happening to me i was saying but why i even say it now but why do we have to do that but that's not right we should be doing it this way here um yeah so <clears throat> i guess another big thing is 
I never used to go to church. <clears throat> I always believed in God and always believed in Jesus, but I never went to church. And I've always been honest and done the right things in life. And <clears throat> I felt this, I just felt this connection with Jesus, to tell you the truth. So, wow. Because when I came back, um, I was in bed. One of the first things I bought, I hopped online and I bought this cross. And it never leaves me. It's on me all the time. But I feel this connection with Jesus. So as things unfold, like I'm studying lots of NDEs and things like that online and about why and what and who, you know what what happened and everybody has a different story but most of them are jesus so that's where it plays into <clears throat> me you know like i think well okay was the tall angel jesus um was that jesus or was i talking to jesus beside me like his energy beside me and he engaged the angels to come and heal me yeah so what the angels actually did was called a holy healing. So they came through and they actually performed a holy healing on me, which I've found out since. So it's all, it all comes down through from, obviously, the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. So in recent times, we've shifted from Australia, um, from Sydney, Australia, back to New Zealand, where I was born and bred. I've been in Australia for 20 years. Uh, four years <clears throat> worked really hard in the construction industry over there and pretty much got burnt out um, so New Zealand is a lot quieter but New Zealand to me is a is a very spiritual place it's a very deep spiritual place here eh? so since being back um, there's been lots of changes and things and we've actually joined this beautiful local church down the road and this church is it's quite old it's um, well for New Zealand it's quite old it's like 1915 um, beautiful old timber church and we've got cool people there and a cool pa pastor guy he's actually from um, Canada originally um, and I met him one day I was actually walking our dog and he came out hey here you go man and he's you know we just started chatting away there and um, and I thought I've got to tell my story so I told him my story and he understood what I was talking about he goes wow yes okay so I um they they actually look after um how do we say is it missionaries they have missionary in India and they look after Indian children in India and they go through yeah, some really tough times like some of these children are born they don't even know who their mothers or fathers are and they're left under you know in shelters and abandoned and things like that but these children actually i don't know how to explain it but um <clears throat> there's a book i was given um but they actually go to heaven they go to heaven the out of body experiences go to heaven they experience heaven the beautiful colors and riding bikes and seeing jesus and things and they come back to earth again it's happened quite a few times actually yeah so yeah, so it was it was nice to talk to the people at the church about my experience because it makes it the truth, like the the truth of everything. Um, yeah. So, I guess um, another another thing that we did, we went to Taupo about a year ago, and there was a um, an ascension weekend. <clears throat> so, there's an ascension me meditation. It was actually a week. Um, and the, the monks come out from the different countries, but the main monks come from Spain. <clears throat> and um, this guy, Manu, he's actually American. Um, so what, the, what, the, what they actually do, they, you meditate in silence, but you say these different words and things, takes you into a trance meditation, and it's that powerful. You actually feel yourself elevating out of your body. Um, I'm not sure what the word is, but yeah, elevate out of the body so <clears throat> anyway um manu was there who's the the head monk talking away and i thought okay i need to share my story with him and so we spoke and he says ravi he says jesus was with you 
I said, yeah, but how do you know? He goes, Robbie, I've seen Jesus. Jesus was with you. And then he opened up and told me a story about him, how he was, um, after he did his practices and things and came out and colors were like popping. And he said he was doing a prayer and he came down. He said the floor just opened up and he fell through the floor into the all these popping purple, yellow, green, bright colors sort of thing. And then he came came back again, you know. Um yeah, but anyway, he had a sore back, a sore back and a sore foot. He goes, do you want to try doing a healing on me? I said, well, I've never actually done a healing apart from my wife's neck. And he goes, no, no, you've got the capabilities for healing. He goes, would you like to do a healing on me? I said, okay. So we went upstairs and it's upstairs in this building, beautiful view over Lake Taupo. And he sat in a chair. And um, so I started, like I channeled, channeled first. Um, and then I started the healing like on his back and uh, back in his head and then down his legs and things like that. Um, and then once I was finished, I said, well, I said, um, how was how was that? And he goes, wow, he goes, it felt like there was hundreds or thousands of hands going down my back, just undoing rubber bands, pop, 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 like that. And I said, wow, that's amazing. And he goes, when you went up around my head, he says, he could feel his third eye open. Um, he could feel the, 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 the energy coming and flowing down through his body. So, um, yeah, so that was pretty incredible. So we kept in touch for a little bit. He went back to Spain and um, <clears throat> I got a message from him about a month or so later after that. And his back was healed. I was like, oh, my goodness, that's amazing. It's so incredible, eh? Um, yeah, I have, I, I, I have all the abilities, but I guess what I think at the moment is I'm in a bit of a stall pattern because other things are happening, getting ready for me to have more abilities to go out to start healing people and doing different things. Um, yeah. So one thing, I've, I've I've written a little bit of a note here as well. So <clears throat> this this is especially the last few months. There's been a lot of changes in the world, a lot of energy changes and things, and that's one thing I've really been affected by as well. Um, energy upgrades and things. So I'll just read a couple of things, which are well, it's actually a few things that have been going on, especially last few months, and then right up until even like the last few days. So I come back into my body, not for me, not for my family, not for my job. I came back to help make it in the world. Heaven is real. So that was one question I had for me. Is like, what am I doing here? Why why am I so special? You know, um, lots of things. But I realized I'm not back here for me. I'm actually here to help everybody and help make in the world and help heal people. Um, so lots of synchronicities have been happening lately, like angel numbers, just like popping out while driving, be three cars in a row, you might have one, 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 and four, 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 and five, 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 it's like, wow, where that, this is just incredible, and you turn around the corner, and there's like six, 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 and one, 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 and three, 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 it's like, you know, like, there's been so many different synchronicities, um, happening this week, eh? Um, and then even say the, the van I have, the speedo in the van, I wasn't even looking at the speedo, pulled into the driveway, looked down, this happened twice, 80 something, 555, this week, pulled into the driveway, 666, it's like, oh my goodness, this is just incredible, all these angels, angel numbers and that out here, um, and this is another really bizarre one last week our bank accounts so my wife says look at our bank accounts we had two bank accounts with the figure said 666 another one 666 and then just this week another bank account in australia she says look at this one 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 so my goodness this this is just as you don't engineer it it just happens oh eh, you know it's pretty 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 amazing eh so um, another another one was um, I'm driving along in the van and I'm thinking about an old girlfriend of mine. Her name was Fiona <clears throat> and she actually died of cancer last year. 
And um, so driving along there, and I was, it's just like Fiona coming to my mind. And then the same time on the radio, this lady, and my name is Fiona, da 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 da, da starts talking on the radio. That happened twice. That happened twice. Eh? That was like pretty, pretty amazing the way that happened. And then other synchronicities were up in Whangarei, which is up north of Auckland, and we're visiting my old um, my navigator and his wife, Debbie Warwick. And um, yeah, they're very connected to those two, eh, you know. And um, Warwick is so funny. So anyway, um, we've got I've got a Sabari rally car, and it makes a real dugu 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 sounds when it idles. So Warwick, it was we were laughing away there, and he's saying dugu dugu dugu. And um, anyway, so next day we're out for a drive. We're heading out. Actually, we're going for a bit of a look up to this Buddhist temple. And um, Warwick says dugu dugu dugu. Next minute, this car passes us with dugu written on the number plate. And it was like, what the heck? That was so, that was another, another, another sort of freaky one as well. Um, and then the, the, we had another one. My wife and I were going to go for a walk up Papamo Hill. We pulled into the car park. Same thing. We seen tr three lots of triple numbers. We're sitting there and the song on the radio was um, a song from 1985, uh, Mr. Mr. Song. Um Kerry Elason, I think it was called. And then my wife said something about the word flourish. And we were sitting there saying, wow, this is just amazing because it's a it's quite a spiritual song as well. I said, man, this is amazing. We just felt the energy. Hop out of the car, close the door, car drives to the car park with flourish on the plate. And there was another synchronicity, bang, bang, just like that, eh, you know? So we go for a walk up this beautiful hill, but when you walk up the hill, I guess with because the energies are changing, you can actually just feel the, you can feel the energy like like you're in a different realm, um, you know, like you, yeah, it's so so beautiful, eh? Um, so this is something that happened a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> was um, we're in church, and you could. I guess there's another, you could feel the energy of the Holy Spirit in the church as well. And then we have a cup of tea afterwards. I walked outside, looked at the grass, and the grass was just popping with all these rainbows. They had like little beads of water, I mean, on, on the leaves of the grass, but it was just like, like this, you know. And um, yeah, it's called um, flora illumination. So when, because we're moving into these uh, new, I, I guess, new realms, ascensions, this happens a lot more as well. You see a lot more flora, illumination, like colors popping out in the clouds, rainbows. Um, I took a photo the other day. It was a bright, sunny day. Right beside the sun was like a rainbow sort of a thing in the cloud, but it wasn't raining. It was just the glow that the sun, sun had as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, another thing that's just happened lately is, um, restless sleeping. So, especially like the last two weeks, um, I know we've had the solar flares out there and it's lifted the energy levels of the earth and everything like that there. We had the solar flares and the aurora lights and sleeping has really affected me because I could feel my body just um, um, like blazing, I would say, you know, my body's just like blazing with this with this energy and struggling to sleep. Um, same with the full moons and things like that there as well. Um, so what you know, you feel the upgrades. You your body's getting an upgrade and things like that, eh? Um, which is which is you know, I feel more enlightened now than what it was before as well. Yeah. Um, so with the solar flares as well, you have the obviously the Laura lights, what's going on around the world. But then, <clears throat> you know, you got the big one that's coming is going to be this big flashing bright lights going to come and hit the earth. Um, everybody's going to see it. And then we go into like a three days of darkness, which is all spoken about. Um, and then from there, there's going to be a lot of changes, changes in the world as well. Yeah. Um, so I had a dream the other 
the other week and this dream had this date on of the 26th of june it's like 26th of june and i wake up it was like 26th of june 26th of june 26th of june saying that's a weird why am i thinking the 26th of june the other day i was walking along a monarch butterfly monarch butterfly is a very spiritual come out of nowhere flew boof hit me in the shoulder and like really like felt like a finger sticking in my folder and then it flew around me and then landed on the footpath so i went over to this little monarch butterfly and i talked to it and says come on mate and i picked him up and i took him over and i put him onto like a leaf over there and then where i was actually standing he, this monarch butterfly stayed there the whole time and i was like wow and that was actually on the um the 26th and then the next day i'm walking along i could see my shadow and then i could see a shadow of a butterfly beside me on the road shadow of a butterfly beside me and i turn up and have a look and there's the monarch butterfly going along following me following me along like so until it till it flew off yeah so because monarch butterflies any butterfly is actually quite spiritual as well um like angels you know they could be from could be a, a past family member or friend or anybody too like that as well yeah um so i had a dream this was on thursday the 27th and this is a real one of those real 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 dreams that you have where you get visited so i walk into this room and there's a white bed and sitting on the white bed with his legs looking at me was Elvis Presley and Elvis had this gold suit on and he was just like glowing glowing gold and even his face I looked at his face he had like gold sort of makeup on his face and hang on I've got a special diary here I wrote down exactly what happened um I said to him, what are you doing here? Elvis said, Elvis said, I've come for you. I said, you're too old to be here. <laughs> um, and then we were in the room with a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of, there's actually a lot of um, females probably in their 50s and 60s and things like this. And I walked up and Elvis came down. He put his hand on my head like so. And then he poured water over the top of my head, like he was giving me a um, oh, what do you call it? Like a like a blessing, I suppose you'd be. Um, I'm not sure what the what the word is. Yeah, like a baptism. That's it. A baptism. You got it. That's what he was doing. And then when I woke up yesterday morning, I just felt like how I come out of the hospital that day. Just that that energy threw me and lightened and I walked outside um, looking at obviously the clouds and things like that and everything just looked different everything was just like like popping out again eh? you know um, and then we went for a little bit of a drive around a lake not far from here by Rotorua we we're walking around and it was the same thing I could just feel this energy spiritual energy with me but everything just looked beautiful everything was just popping and glowing like the and the birds the fantails flying around and the tuis and singing and things oh eh? yeah um yeah, it's like i had another upgrade <laughs> tell you the truth why so, do you think elvis i really don't know okay so i do love elvis and i do love his singing and i do know he's very spiritual and back in his day and my auntie my auntie who passed away my auntie lynn who passed away um probably not quite a year ago um i used to talk to her quite a lot and um she had a elvis presley collection and she actually had a from when she was a little girl a a letter from elvis and it was signed by elvis and um she said to me just before she died she says Robbie, I want you to have my Elvis Presley collection because I feel, you know, it should go to you. And um, I, yeah, she passed away before 
I, I, I don't have the collection. Like, yeah, but it's, it's nice if her family has it, though. Um, but we used to talk about Elvis Presley quite a lot, to tell you the truth, and about his spiritual songs. And she'd send me on Messenger. She says, oh, Robbie, here's another really nice Elvis gospel song. You listen to this song here, you know, and um, yeah, and that was that was pretty neat, eh? Um, but yeah, why Elvis? I don't know. I'm sort of thinking, I haven't told anybody. You're the first one I've told, apart from my wife, to tell you the truth. Um, but Elvis, yeah, I'm, I really, I'm really not sure. I love his songs and I love his energy and I do know he's very connected as well. Um, Cause at first uh, I think uh, yesterday when I woke up, I think was that Jesus in disguise maybe? I mean, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but I feel different. I know that. Yeah. That's it. the important part. You've got a blessing or a baptism, like you said. Um, yeah. Now you talked about some earth changes coming. There's going to be a big, a big white, flash of light and yeah. then some earth changes what kind of earth changes should we expect well i'm a very positive person um but some of these changes aren't very nice um and i i think i've been things have been channeled to me as well to look at different things um so from what from what this is what I understand is um is we have the big flash of lights going to come. We have after that three days of darkness where we have no internet, no phone, um, hard to communicate with with anybody, but it actually introduces our telepathy a lot more. But it's an earth upgrade as a well as a human spiritual upgrade um and then somewhere along the line is um this is the bit i don't like is dolores cannon um a lot of her things have just been popping up and her her predictions and edward casey his predictions <clears throat> about the earth changes which is <clears throat> not very nice um which are bringing in earthquakes and floods um and things like that but the whole structure of the world changes something to do with the um i guess is it the the platonic plates or something like that there they used to be like this here but now they're starting to go like this on top of each other but because of the energy from the solar flares and the universe and the moon all the energies of the earth mother guy has changed as well <clears throat> so um yeah the, I'm not going to say too much. All, all, I don't want to say too much, but it's best if people look at, especially Edwin Casey, look at his predictions <clears throat> because the whole world changes. Um, and <clears throat> some people survive and some people don't survive it. Um, but what does happen is in the whole mix of things is what they call Jesus' second coming. You feel the Jesus second coming, the whole earth changes, the energy of the earth changes. There's things like the Illuminati, all those sort of organizations, they disappear. Um, yeah, and another one, I'm not too sure whether you know the other day, but the white buffalo, the white buffalo that was born in Yellowstone. So um, the white, the white buffalo of Lakota fills a 2000 year prophecy um it was born on the 4th of june and that's to do with christ's second coming as well so i actually just found out about this um yesterday i was looking at it online the indian chiefs in yellowstone were talking about it and they were happy in uh, in one way and sad in another because it's a lot of big earth changes are going to happen yeah but this is, it's pretty amazing how a lot of these things are actually coming true now, eh? You know, like from 2000 years ago, these prophecies and things, and, you know, the world is changing and it's changing like at such a phenomenal, like hyper speed accelerated pace at the moment as well. If you notice when you wake up, the days and the weeks and things just go so fast as well, eh? You know, everybody. It's just it's accelerated everything and everybody and our energies. <clears throat> but the other thing too is like we we as humans and spirits are waking up. 
we're, we're, we're actually like waking up to who we really are. Yeah. And you and your wife have experienced so many synchronicities and you were telling us a little bit about those. What do that, what do they mean? Yeah, we ask the same thing. Like it's, it's, my wife sees them just as much as me. So our text messages, I've just seen four, 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 seven, 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 and one, one, one. And then I'll text her back, oh, I've just seen, da, da, da. you know what I mean? Like, oh, so funny, eh? But yeah, she she sees, um, she hasn't had an end you like me, but she's actually very connected as well, eh? Um, but she sees and feels energies and like say all those synchronicities and things like we 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 look at it as like the angels are angels are looking after us that's what we think the angels are looking at after us and they're helping helping guide us we're in the we're heading in the right direction that's that's the way we look at it yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's a really comforting way to look at it i think if yeah. you open your eyes and you uh are open-minded everyone will see synchronicities all throughout their day yeah yeah exactly yeah and yeah. so you said your near-death experience you thought at first it was a dream did it feel dreamlike while you were there or was it was it more real some people describe no, them it felt real yeah it felt real like you and i talking now it was like like it, when i woke up because i'm in the building construction um industry sort of thing it, it was like we're standing back having a cup of tea, looking at the building site sort of thing and just talking about what's going on and about getting a crane in over here or a concrete pump over there or something and having a cup of tea and a chat. That's what it felt like. Eh? It just felt so real. It felt like, yeah, it just felt so real, eh? Yeah. But my friend Tania, I'll go back to my friend Tania. Um, she, um, so very close friendship um, for many, many, many years with motorsport and things like that. And then when I went to Australia, she would come and visit or I'd come and visit her or vice versa sort of thing. But we always had a pretty cool connection. And um, yeah, so when when we found out she had cancer, um, Viv and I were about to get married. So I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to have a best man. I want Tanya to be my best lady at the wedding. So we flew back here to New Zealand and we saw her. She was in hospital just for the day, having a blood transfusion. And then her and Viv were talking about dresses and things like that. And um, it was such a cool time. I eh? sort of walked up the reception. Robbie, I'm over here. You know, like she she knew I was there before I even got there. Um, yeah, such a blessing of a time. And um, I always thought, oh, we had to get going. I thought, Oh no, we'll get plenty of photos at the wedding. We'll get plenty of photos at the wedding. So um flew back to Australia and I was working out back <clears throat> on a on a um on a project and um I didn't have phone reception. And then people were trying to get a hold of me, which I didn't know until I got phone reception. I was like, Oh, did you hear Tanya passed away? I was like, What? <clears throat> and that just broke me. I was so broken, eh? So um when that actually happened, she visited me. I was asleep and she visited me in my room and she's walking up and down the bottom of the bed. She said, Robbie, come on, Robbie, you got to get up. You got to keep going, Robbie. You're going to have to be strong. You're going to have to keep going, Robbie. And, you know, yeah, she's saying things like that, eh? you know. But at that time, I didn't know she had actually had, had, had passed. Um, but she did and she visited me and yeah and so when we had our wedding um, it was very special so we released balloons and things like that over the sea for her and everything and um yeah and then <clears throat> I had a very good connection with her brother Leon and just came back from America and so Leon Stiles he used to rally cars in California um and uh, he actually, I don't know whether you heard of the Pikes Peak hill climb over there, but he was actually Pikes Peak champion in the class back in the early 2000s. So he made his way back here to New Zealand. And um, <clears throat> we were meant to meet up two years ago. Viv and I flew in and we're on our way up to Taupo. Next minute, Leon passed away. So like, what the heck? We missed him by a day. So he came in and we saw him in state. And I sat down here to talk to him 
And then even with Leon, there's been different spiritual things have happened with Leon as well. Like messages, weird messages, like have come up on Instagram. And it's like, what the heck? And then one of Leon's friends, um, him and his wife come over from Costa Rica a few months ago on holiday. And we were both walking along the road there, talking about Leon. And then both of us together got goosebumps. Like down in our body, we're walking along. It's like Leon was with us walking along with us and the first beer we had it was cheers to like leon and tania yeah so your spirits people who who pass away they're still with you even though they're physically not here they're still with you around you guiding you um yeah it's really it's really special eh? Mm, that's comforting to know that our loved ones are still with us and we haven't lost them yeah, and your pets. Your pets are there waiting for us. Yeah, like your pets. Like soon, as soon as we move from this dimension to that dimension, everybody's there waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So you hear about people. You hear about people like in hospice, right? So people are, you know, they're taking their <clears throat> their last breath of life, and they haven't moved for many weeks. All of a sudden, they'll sit up and they'll reach out to hug somebody like this is because family members have come down to them and they see them and they're reaching out and they're taking them away, taking their spirit out of their body, their soul. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, can you imagine anything more beautiful than to see your your loved ones that have died <clears throat> right yeah. as you're passing? Gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. Robbie, yeah. if my if my viewers wanted to reach out to you, how can they find you? Um, it's best by email. Um, spiritual inspirations dot triple eight at gmail dot com. Um, I do have an Instagram page. I haven't really sort of used it much. Um, but I do I do intend, like I'm saying, I, I think I'm still going through the the school of everything at the moment. Once I have my school side what obviously the universe is teaching me um i do plan on like doing a lot more um i'd love to do what you're doing as well but helping people <clears throat> and physically helping people healing people as well um the time is coming for that i feel um yeah you're doing a lot to help people and i appreciate that and uh if you had one message that you wanted the viewers to take away from this conversation we had today what would it be uh, well just remember we're all love god is love god is an energy um we're all love and jesus is always with us as well and your spirit family is always with you and if you're ever unsure about things just talk just talk ask questions ask your family ask jesus ask whoever um because they do listen to you yeah thank you so much robbie for being my guest i appreciate you so much and i really enjoyed this time together yes you're very welcome here and like i say i've loved watching your videos over the last quite a few months as well and um, you're a big inspiration to the world as well thank you so much that means a lot to me you are as well i appreciate you thank you for being here i just want to tell you how much i appreciate you being here and supporting my channel if you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing if you enjoy near-death experiences and other spiritually transformative stories it helps the algorithm know that this information is useful and push it out to more people and that's the goal to get as many people to know that we are eternal spiritual beings and that we never die our bodies might die but our essence will never die and i want people to live with less fear let's all spread the word like comment subscribe share hit that little notification bell so you get all the notifications when my videos post thank you for all of your support i'm sending love to you